Greetings, everybody. I'm Michael. Welcome back to my studio and another video on how I podcast. As I always say, I'm not going to tell you how to podcast or broadcast or any of those things. I'm sure that you are doing it just fine. I'm just going to show you the way that I do all of this stuff, and maybe you'll pick up a couple of things, or maybe you can teach me a couple of things. This is all just fun and games here. Last time I talked about microphone techniques. Bing! And I know you haven't watched that video. I can see the numbers on all the other videos that I've done compared to that one. And apparently nobody out there has any problem with working their microphone. But I suggest that you watch that because this is part two. Now, whereas last time I talked about the angle of your microphone and the distance and all of those things, how to work a microphone, this time, as promised at the end of that video, I'm going to talk about vocal warm-up techniques and warming up your instrument. You know, this thing that we're using behind our microphones, that is every bit, uh, well, that's the second side of the coin of microphone technique. If you aren't loose and limber and all of those things, you can have all of this equipment. You can know how to use it all. You can know how to use your microphone, but if you're mouth and you're, you're this, I'm going to say it again, your instrument, if it's not up to snuff, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how clean of sound you record. You've got to use your instrument, your voice, in order to interest, entertain, and inform those people who are listening to you. So, first things first. This is the most important thing. A big old cup of water, and not just water. You'll notice there's no ice in this water. It's tepid. It's lukewarm. It's room temperature. I always have that thing filled up and I'm drinking constantly. You want to do that in order to keep your body hydrated, well hydrated. I heard somebody say a couple of weeks ago that if you feel thirsty, if you experience thirst, you're already partially dehydrated. Just drink your water all the time. Cold water will dry up your mouth and you'll begin to get those dreaded, dreaded mouth noises. I want to talk about that for just a minute because uh, about a week ago, I was listening to a show on NPR. It was a fantastic show. They had this lady come in to, I shouldn't have identified the gender. They had a person come in and tell this fantastic personal story. The problem was mouth noises. Oh my goodness, it was so distracting. And I couldn't believe that they didn't stop the interview and say, here, why don't you suck on this candy or something? This is going to help lubricate your mouth and get some juices flowing. Hard candies help your mouth to water, keep it well lubricated, and keep those nasty mouth noises at bay. You know what I'm talking about. When people are ta talking and all you hear is the clicking and sounds inside their mouth, that's very, very distracting. Another thing is green apples. Slice up some green apples and pop those in and they will uh, get the juices flowing. So all those things aside, first thing you want to do is you know, loosen up. You want to stretch out. In fact, your whole body, really, because your whole body is, at least me, I'm a very kinetic talker. You can see that on any of the videos. I'm always moving. And that actually uh, contributes to the performance. So loosen yourself up. And now we're going to get real silly and I'm going to make a fool out of myself here in, in public. Um, but that's okay. I'm willing to take the bullet on that. Loosen up your mouth. And this is what I do. Uh, first things first is, okay, do that for a while. Get it loosened up. Get your lips, especially early in the morning. I do a morning radio show uh, that uh, I have to get up an hour ahead of time to start warming up, vocal warm-ups. And I start with loosening up a little bit. And then you want to do what are called lip trills. Uh, that's where you uh, just vibrate your lips, and this is going to be very silly, like that. Sometimes it's hard to get going, especially if you're cold and uh, you, know, you just woke up and things. So there's a trick. You can push a little bit further back, not up, not up front on your, on your cheeks next to your lips, but a little bit back, and you can get started that way. 
See, and that one that I just did was very localized. It was just the tip of my lips, which is good. But I like to expand it and get all of my lips. You want to get that um, that numbing feeling on the tip of your lips. That's when you know that you're really working well on that one. Um, you also want to work through your vocal register as you're doing that. So, so let me take this opportunity to talk about that register, your pitch. Where do you talk? What's your natural pitch? Where's your bass line? Here's a little trick to determine that. We just passed the holiday season here in the United States. I don't know what you guys do elsewhere in the world, but uh, I have a feeling that there were a lot of you feasting uh, during that time. And you go over to you know, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house, wherever your destination was, or whether everybody came over to your house to feast, you know that there's one dish, one dish that there had better be on the table for that feast, or you're going to be disappointed. You love that dish, whatever it may be. And you take a big old bite of that, What's your reaction to that? Well, the typical, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that was good stuff. That's how you can determine your natural pitch. Do that. Mm, 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 mm. That is where my voice lives. That's the baseline. Uh, and then I can work off of that up and down. So learn that. Mm, 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 mm. That's where I talk. Now, as I'm doing my vocal warm-ups, I want to work through my range, up and down. And there's fun things that you can do. Uh, just start at the top and drop, or start at the bottom and work your way up. Do that with each of these uh, vocal warm-ups that I'm going to show you. And you can do it slow and then fast what have you. Do it for several minutes. Next one is your tongue. Tongue trills, tongue rolls, uh, rolling your R's, right? Do that several minutes. Just keep doing it. And there's a, a vocal warm-up, um, not a tongue twister, really. I guess it could be a tongue twister depending on how hard of a time it is. Around the ragged rock, the ragged rascal ran. Say it like Gimli from The Lord of the Rings. Around the ragged rocks, the ragged rascal ran. Practice that. Next up after that is um, let's uh, uh, concentrate on getting our lips uh, uh, tingling here a little bit better. M's. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can feel it. My lips get that tingly, almost numbing feeling. Do that M's. Mm -hmm. And you'll feel it also up in your nose a little bit. You could do it with ins as well. In fact, you ought to, uh, because that's going to change uh, where the action is taking place in your mouth and uh, you know, this whole area. Mm, I felt that even more in my nose and the tip of my tongue. Another one is L. And that starts to get it a little bit further back. Another one is Z. This one, you want to just uh, open your lips a little bit. Don't clench your teeth together. Just put them together lightly. Oh, that feels good. That feels nice. And then the hard one is the NG sound. Find whatever word is easiest for you, like young, young. What these exercises are doing is helping you get the, your voice into what's known as the mask this area. Think of Bane from uh, from Batman, right? Dark Knight Rises. Your tongue twisters and your um, uh, vocal exercises will help to get your voice up into the mask. 
There's a classic one that uh, used in theater. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. That's not necessarily a vocal, uh, a tongue twister. What that is, is focusing your energy at the front, your consonants, getting your consonants up to the front. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. So that you're not talking in the back of your, your throat. You're talking up front and it's going to help uh, uh, during your warm up to use all of the necessary components for your voice. We want to get a, a, a crisp frontal placement of those consonants. And then, of course, classic tongue twisters like Peter Piper, right? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? That one is fantastic for getting the consonants up front and also uh, uh, reducing plosives, making uh, yourself aware of the pressure, the p, p that those P's can bring out, right? Peter Piper. Oh, here's what I was going to say. All of this together won't do a thing for you if you are not performing behind the microphone. Yes, just as I was saying at the top of the video, all the equipment, all the technique, everything will not get you to your goal if you're not performing behind the microphone. And so you can say... Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked, right? You just monotone. I found my bass and I just stay in right, right there. Or I can use my vocal range and deliver that tongue twister if I can do it right now. Such as this. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? That may not be the greatest example, but I'm performing, right? Inflection, diction, all of those wonderful things are much better than staying in my narrow, comfortable, bass note or range. Open that thing up and get behind the microphone and entertain people. Captivate them and then educate them or whatever it is that you are doing behind the microphone. I hope that these things helped you out. There are a whole lot more uh, tongue twisters and vocal warm-ups out there that will help you with things such as sibilance. I have a problem with sibilance. You know, that's that nasty sounding S, uh, sh kind of a sh sound uh, on, um, on, on words like, such as this, pleasure, pressure, I have to really concentrate when I'm behind the microphone. When I'm in my daily life, man, I'm one of the worst speakers that there are. If I'm just talking with my wife or the kids or what have you, I'm a lazy, lazy speaker. Sometimes you can't tell where one word ends and the next one begins, right? Uh, I slur my speech. Um, all the things that you are not supposed to do. Well, you're not supposed to do them if you're behind a microphone. And so once you sit down behind that microphone and you are all warmed up and all that good stuff and you've spent time, you know, 15, 20 minutes, even up to an hour warming up your instrument, hit the microphone again, sit down and perform, right? I think that's all I had to say. Oh, big tip here. If you do these things in a hot shower, it'll speed up the process. So I do hope that these tips and tricks have uh, helped you. Let me know if they have down in the comments below or if you want to add to them or any of those good things. If you enjoy how I podcast, make sure to subscribe to the channel below and click that bell down there and you will be notified each time I post a new video. We'll talk to you next time. And now go out there and produce something. <laughs>